this example we're going to see how to create some wood engraved text. So for this example let's start with a new document that has a canvas size of 350 by 200. And let's start with the rounded rectangle tool. And let's draw us out a nice rounded rectangle. Remember with a rounded rectangle you can control the radius of the corners by clicking on these little yellow diamonds and dragging them to adjust the radius that you want. Now while the rounded rectangle is still selected, let's choose the paint bucket tool and let's choose a wood pattern. Doesn't matter which wood you choose, I'm going to choose the plain wood. Next, let's add a bevel. You may need to uh, select your pointer tool and reselect the uh, rounded rectangle. But from the filters option, I need to adjust my screen a second so you can see down here at the bottom. But let's add a uh, filter, a live filter, bevel and emboss, and let's choose the inner bevel. And let's make sure it's set to flat. Let's set the width to five for this example. Notice what the width actually does. If you want to play around with that for a second to kind of get a grip on what it what effect it actually has. And let's play with the contrast of the bevel. See what that does. Let's set ours at 100 percent. And the softness again check out what it does but I think zero is going to be a good softness for our uh, demonstration here. And then the angle, I want to suggest 135, but again, experiment with it to see exactly what the bevel angle does for you. So I can get mine back to 135. 136 is close enough. I want my wood to have a little bit richer look. So let's choose the filters menu. Choose the uh, adjust colors, hue, and saturation option. And what should we crank this up to? Let's play around a little bit with it. First, it will ask you this to convert this to bitmaps. Are you sure you want to do that? Sure, that's okay. And yours probably should already be set to 000, I guess. I've been experimenting with mine already before creating this tutorial. But move this out of the way. Move the hue saturation dialog, out, dialog box out of the way and play with the hue. Except we don't want to color out, colorize ours. So we'll uncheck that. Make sure that's unchecked. But that's too extreme what I was showing you there. Probably let's leave it about at one. But the saturation we can crank up quite a bit. Let's see what a 27 does for us. Again, experiment around with this to see exactly what these options do to your graphic. And for the lightness, let's see what a good lightness looks like. That's too light. 41 is way too light. We probably need a negative, say around a 25. There, that looks like some good dark rich wood. Then hit OK. Once you have it, uh, the color, the color uh, settings the way you want them. Okay, we're ready to add some text, but let's first create a new layer for the text. And before I do that, let's rename the layer we have the uh, wood base drawn on. So I'm going to go over to the layers panel, double click where it says layer one, and I'm going to call this wood base. And then I'm going to create a new or duplicate layer, a new layer actually. And let's call this layer text. Like a lot of the text effects, uh, the font you choose really makes all the difference of how the text effects will look. So let's choose the text tool, of course. And for this example, I'm going to choose a stencil text. I think that will give us a good effect. Stencil, stencil standard, how about? And what's going to be a good size for this? 150 is way too big. Let's crank that down maybe to about a 70. And how about if we just put in wood? 
as our text. Move it over so it's centered. The color for now doesn't matter. We're going to change this in a minute. But let's also change the width of the uh, text. Right now it's set to 100. Let's go up to somewhere between 125 and 130. Spread it out a good little bit. Also, we don't want our text to be filled. So let's choose the Fill Swatch in the Properties panel. And click the Transparent button. And also make sure you have a uh, dark color for the outline of the text. I'm going to go and change it to black if it's not already black. And the stroke option is a very important uh, step for this particular effect. So let's access the stroke options. And we want to choose an outside path for our stroke. And then for the stroke options, we're going to use an unnatural 3D. And let's make the width of this about 5 or 6 or close to that. And again, we want the stroke outside and the texture we can leave at grain. I think that's the default. Now we need to apply a filter to give a uh, inner beveled uh, effect so it actually looks like this text is burned into the wood. So again, be sure you have the text selected. And then let's apply a filter. Again, I need to move my screen up a little bit. Let's apply a bevel and emboss and let's use a inner bevel. And for the settings, let's use a ring this time. And we'll make the width about five or six. And the contrast will crank up to 100. And the softness at zero and the angle 135 looks like that's still a good angle for this. We can add another inner bevel. Let's do that again. So we'll go to our filters option, add another inner, be inner bevel. We'll set the uh, setting similar to what we had on the last one except for the angle we're going to make it a little bit different. Let's go with 300 and something. How about 308. How does that look? There we go. That looks like a nice engraved uh, text into the wood now, doesn't it? All right, a couple of last uh, final touches we could do to enhance this a little bit more. Let's go back to our wood base layer in the layers panel. And let's draw another rectangle on top of the one we already have using the same dimensions if we can. And for this one, let's change the uh, fill options to a gradient, a linear gradient. And we want to use a black white. And we can adjust this a little bit to get a nice reflection on the top or the bottom. Let's go with a nice reflection on the bottom where it's a little lighter down there. And then under layers we want to change the normal mode. So we'll click where it says normal to a screen mode. And you can see how adding that second rectangle with the uh, gradient on it changed the effect of the wood. And we can, again, manipulate our radiant handles to get whatever desired effect we want. Would you look at that?